Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a video which is on a topic that I've never spoken about on my YouTube channel before and it's quite a delicate topic and it's been something I've been talking about talking about for the last few years and pretty much ever since I started my YouTube channel like near on four years ago. I feel now that it's the right time to speak about it for me personally but also I recently wrote a blog post about it too so I just feel quite comfortable with coming on here to talk about it because I've had a really good reception from my blog followers so I thought I would talk to you guys about it. If you want to look at that blog by the way I'll link it down below. And the topic itself is talking about my previous struggles with an eating disorder. Now for any of you who don't read my blog you might not know this but when I was 14 I was diagnosed with anorexia nervosa and I suffered with that for about a year and a half before I started to go into recovery. Now, I didn't want to make a video about this for a very long time because I've got a lot of issues, or I've had a lot of issues in the past with body confidence, but also dealing with negativity about my weight and also what other people thought of me. So I've just been very nervous about filming it. I think now I want to help other people and I've had a lot of people reach out to me after writing the blog post after they read it and a lot of them have had anorexia or still have it to this day and I thought I might be able to help some of you guys on here who are watching this so I kind of felt that I should brush away my concerns and come on here and do a video because if it's going to help at least one person watching this then it's really worth my while. So I'll first of all begin by talking about the context of my eating disorder and how it started to arise. So I was 14, like I said, I was at secondary school and I have had a condition since birth called septo-optic dysplasia. I will link the video down below where I talk about it. Basically, the condition means, amongst other things like my sight loss that I have, my condition also affects my endocrine system. So there are lots of different contributing factors to that, but one of which is that I have to take hormone replacement therapy in the form of steroids because it doesn't make up enough hormones to deal with things like shock and things so I have to take a tablet called hydrocortisone and that has basically meant that my weight has fluctuated throughout my teenage years so when I was 14 I was taking quite a high dosage I wasn't on growth hormone at the time which is an injection that you have that I have now I wasn't overweight I had a bit of water retention like my face was a little bit more bloated I did have a bit more of a bloated swollen stomach because of the tablets I was on there was nothing I could do about it it was just how I was. I was relatively healthy. I did go out for walks, you know, I did like swimming and that kind of thing, and I was just a normal average girl. At the time, I got a lot of negative comments. I was bullied quite a lot when I was at school for my sight impairment. I was also bullied for being a bit bookish and swatty, which I kind of accepted. I was bullied because I was ginger, but I was also bullied because of my appearance and my weight. And they say that I had a swollen stomach and I just didn't look right. And a lot of the time it came from the girls and not all the girls, there were some lovely girls. There was also some girls who did say some comments and it was hurtful to my feelings and I wasn't at a stage in my life where I could cope with it and I didn't really have anyone I could talk to other than my family and I think at the time I didn't know anyone who had the same condition as me so I didn't have anyone who I could vent my frustrations to and who I could talk to and they could talk to me so it was really a difficult time I didn't have anyone who I could speak to so I didn't really realise at the time that it was my condition I didn't really take in that it actually wasn't my fault it was just how my body works I didn't actually take that in so when I started getting comments about my swollen stomach and about the fact that I had a bit of water, water retention around my face it really hit hard and it really did hurt me and also combined with that I also had to deal with the fact that they were saying about my sight loss and the fact that I had wobbly eyes because I had nystagmus and things like that and I had to use a cane and it just all got on top of me and it got to a point where I was like I am sick to death of being bullied for 101 things if there's one thing I can control, if there's one thing I can change, it's my weight I can't do anything about my sight loss or anything else I can't dye my hair a different colour because my mum won't let me I mean I don't want to now of course but at the time there was nothing I could do about the other things so I just decided that I would start to try and lose weight. Now at the time it wasn't anything sinister, I was genuinely just thinking I'm going to stop eating the chocolate, I'm going to go on the treadmill, I'm just going to cut down on things, I'm just going to try and do sit ups and crunches, I'm just going to try and lose a bit of weight and just feel a little bit more better about myself and that's all it genuinely was because I couldn't stop taking the medication because if I did I'd die, it would kill me, like I have to have the medication, it would kill me if I didn't take that medication so I couldn't not take it. So there was nothing I could do about that. So I started to lose weight and I lost it quite slowly at first. So I'd go on the treadmill of an evening. I'd, you know, stop eating desserts and that kind of thing. And it was going quite well. But then it got to a point where I think it started to get 
a bit obsessive because I was losing weight and I was feeling good about myself because I was like oh my god I'm actually really good at this this is actually something I can do really well and I just think it spiraled out of control from there because I'd be weighing myself every other day I would just you know not be eating a lot of stuff and then I started to skip lunches at school so my mum would give me a packed lunch and there was a few times I just missed it because I was just genuinely not hungry or I just was trying to do something else I was doing some homework and I didn't really eat a lot and I didn't really intend to skip lunches but then after a few times of doing this I was actually like I can actually manage not eating my lunch because I can do it so I'm not going to eat it so I would take the lunch with me to school and then I would dump some of it and I'd hide some of it in my room and it went on like this for about I'd say eight months, I was, I was quite quiet about it, I didn't really talk to a lot of people, I was very drawn in, I didn't really have a big friend base, so there was no one to really pick up on how I was feeling, so it went unnoticed for quite a long time, and then my mum finally found my lunches hidden under my bed, and she realised that something was going on, and I'd, I'd lost weight, but I'd been able to say things like, oh I had lunch or I ate before I came in I would just say anything that I could to get out of eating food when I could so I would be able to skip meals and it was very dangerous because I'm hypoglycemic I had so many low blood sugar attacks I had hypo attacks so much when I was anorexic and it was very dangerous but at the time I was like I don't care anymore I genuinely don't care I carried on doing it and then I started to go on the treadmill a lot more so I'd go on it for like two hours a day on, a, on the trot and I would get meals, I would do sit-ups, I would do anything I could to lose weight. I would do star jumps on the spot when I was trying to do something. I would just do anything I could to lose that extra bit of weight or burn off those extra bit of calories. And I was calorie counting a lot, I was calculating what I was eating, and it just got to a point where I lost so much weight. And by the end of it, I think when I was diagnosed officially with anorexia nervosa, I had gone down to 5 stone 10. The way I kind of felt was that every time I set a goal, I wanted to get below it. So I would say, I want to lose half a stone. And then it was, I want to lose another five pounds. And it was, on I want to lose this much weight. I want to go down to this much weight. And this is my new goal weight. And each single time, it was never enough. It was never like, I've got to this weight. I'm happy. I'm going to just try and maintain it now like I do now. It's like, no, I need to lose more weight and more weight and more weight and more weight. And it feels like a slippery slope you're spiraling down and down and down and each time you get more lower you need to go lower like you could never get back up again and i think that's how it was getting for me i just carried on as i was going and then by the time my family had realized it and my friends i was very very dangerously in the grips of anorexia and i started to have to have counseling my consultants would become very heavily involved because they realized how much weight i'd lost I had been hospitalised twice, I had collapsed, I'd pass out quite a lot, I'd, my period had stopped by this point, I was very drawn in, my hair started to fall out, my skin was chalky, my teeth were very weak, I was moody all the time, I had bad breath all the time, and I was very paranoid, I was a very snappy person, I'd lash out quite a lot. I also really had quite a profound disliking towards my family at that time, and it wasn't me, it was the anorexia talking, because I'd look at them trying to get me to eat and my dad trying to say I needed to eat more and that I was a perfectly normal weight. My mum was trying to get me to eat. Everybody just wanted the best for me and they were just genuinely worried about me and my condition. But I saw it as that they were trying to infringe on the one thing I could do. Because the way I saw it was, here am I, I've had a really crap dealing of life. I'm living with a, with a disability, I'm not coping, I'm not happy. I've found one thing that I can do well and yet you feel the need to criticise me and try and take that away from me. And now looking back I realise that's not the case at all, they were just worried about me. Uh, but at the time I didn't see it like this, I saw it as they were the bad guys and I was in the right. I never thought I was anorexic, I didn't really think that I had a problem with it and I was like, no, I'm just on a diet, I'm not anorexic and I didn't really accept that I was until I started speaking to my counsellor and they actually said, well, you know, what do you do this, do you do this, did you do this, you know, are you good at lying about how much you eat, are you perfectionist, you know, what do you eat, do you count calories, do you keep a food diary, what do you do if you've eaten something that you know you shouldn't, do you go on the treadmill, how much do you go on, what, what sort of exercise do you do, and they started to ask me about these traits I had, and it slowly but surely started to click in, that actually, the traits I had and what I was doing was anorexia, and it was the, the traits that are, you know, significant to having anorexia, and I started to realise that actually, no, I am, and I do have a problem with food, and 
there was me, I'd be in hospital and I would have I, I would have been rushing to hospital because of my low blood sugar levels and I just wouldn't eat and I realised no, this is more than just me wanting to lose weight. This is me actually having a serious issue because I know how my condition affects my body. I know hypoglycemia is serious. I know that it can make me go into a coma if I don't eat sugar. Like and yet I can't get past that and I'm still consumed by this all encompassing fear of food and fear of being fat. And that was when I started to think, actually no, they're right, I need help. And I think from that point when I accepted that I needed help that's when I started to improve slowly because I started to go to counsellors, I was very willing to let them talk to me. I started to talk to people at school, I'd actually made some friends by that point and they started to say look we're just trying to help you and we just we don't want you to go down this road and you're not fat and you know they, they would talk to me and they would ask me about how my condition affects me. The only way I can describe anorexia to you, anorexia feels like a ball, you're surrounded in this ball like a bubble but when you start off it's a thin layer and you can hear people and you can see other people around you and how they feel but as you get further and further into anorexia it starts to expand and it starts to thicken and you can no longer hear them and you can no longer understand what they're saying and it becomes more difficult to have a rapport and a relationship with people you love and it will get to a point if you don't try and listen and reach out to, to them and see yourself the way they see you it will get to a point where it consumes you and you can't no longer listen to them and reach out to them. So for me, I had to see myself the way they saw me. And when I did, I actually realised that I do have an issue and I need to sort this out and I need to get myself back on track. So I did. I remember this documentary that Fern Cotter made about Proana websites and she was talking about it a lot and it really hit home because I watched it and there was someone who was very seriously with anorexia and I realised that I don't want to be that, I want to try and get myself out of this rut that I'm in and also I read some books that I had characters with eating disorders and realised that actually this is me, This is th th these people that are, I'm seeing and I'm reading about, they are me and that is what I am doing to myself and that is how I'm treating my body and I've actually got anorexia so I think for me it all started to improve when I actually realised that I had anorexia and that I had the issue. I think once you realise that you have that problem with an eating disorder and you're willing to accept that you have the problem, that's when you can start to work towards you know, recovering from it or living a, a normal life and I think that's the most important thing because by that time when I started to realise that I had the problem, I, I started to increase my calorie intake little by little, I added more options to my diet, I went on the treadmill still but I went on it for a lot less and I did it more for a kind of a recreational thing and I started to take up hobbies so I started to write and that's actually when I first became interested in writing I started to write more like diary entries and poems and novel ideas and that kind of thing and I started to read a lot more I worked really hard at my GCSEs and I just immersed myself into academics I immersed myself into writing and reading and just all those kind of things because I didn't want to be consumed by anorexia anymore I wanted to take my mind off it because if I gave myself time to think about it and let anorexia dig its claws back in it would start to take effect so I was like no I need to remove myself from that mind frame and immerse myself in something else so that's what I started to do and I think that really helped because I was able to write about my feelings and I was able to sort of think about how I felt but also I started to get into fashion as well so I started to want to look nice and wear makeup and I wanted to make myself feel nice because I thought I am trying to change my body to look nice why don't I do something positive why don't I wear nice clothes and put on eyeliner and try and make myself feel nicer that way and that's what I started to do and I think that's the time when I really started to take fashion as my safety blanket and something that I could do and it started to replace the anorexia and it started to nourish me and it started to really make me feel positive about myself and who I was and I think that's really why I started getting into fashion and fashion blogging because fashion it kind of saved me in a sense it kind of gave me that freedom and that sense to be able to express who I was as a person but also I got to a stage in my life where I'd accepted myself for who I was. I thought to myself, Emily, do you really want to do this to yourself? Do you want to stop eating? Do you want to stop taking your tablets? And do you want to do you want to do you want this to wreck your life? Do you want it to take your life? Or do you want to, you know, take control and actually say to yourself, it's okay to be the way I am, it's okay to have my condition because I now know that lots of people with my condition who have to go on hormone replacement therapy and steroids, their weight does fluctuate, I mean at the moment my weight does fluctuate, I'm in between a size 8 and a 10 and it does go up and down and I, whenever I do 
have a bit more of an increase of weight or I have water retention, I just simply cut out a bit of cake for a while and go for a few walks with my dog or go swimming. So I've got to a stage now that I think, well, if I do put on weight, it's okay because I can lose it the healthy way and the right way and I can treat food with respect and I can treat my body with respect that it deserves and give myself what I need to function. And I think because I have that healthy relationship with myself, but also I've come to really accept my disability and accept it as part of me, I no longer feel the need to starve myself to try and control that part of myself because I don't think now that my disability is a negative thing so that thereby I need to try and control another part of myself by not eating. I've now come to accept that my disability is what it is and that I don't need to try and change myself because of my disability. I'm quite comfortable with the person I am. I'm not in any way, shape or form scarred by it in any stretch of the imagination. I'm a very happy-go-lucky person now. I'm very happy with my life. I've got lovely friends who have really helped me to understand my disability and to accept that part of my life because a lot of them are very open about their mental health conditions. So I'm very open about it now. But at the time, I, it did affect me and it did hurt me. And I mean, I still remember those comments that they said to me, but it doesn't affect me as much as it used to anymore. I just remember it. You know, if I ever do get any comments on my channel or on my blog about my weight, I won't let it affect me again because I don't want to go back down that road again and what I would like to say to any of you guys who are watching this who would have said something like that to somebody just remember how it affects someone because those comments took away a year and a half of my life and it could have really really damaged me and it really did mentally damage me at the time I, that's why I'm so against bullying and that kind of thing because those comments really can strike a chord with someone they can really hurt and they can really resonate in someone's mind and brain and it's so hard for them to forget which is why I'd like to campaign more about bullying and anti-bullying and also anorexia awareness and actually how it can affect people. And I've recently had a few people contact me in light of the blog that I wrote and they themselves have got anorexia and some of them actually are visually impaired themselves. I'm not going to mention any names because I wouldn't do that, but they know that they can always talk to me. I'm always there for them. I'll always be happy to talk if they want to. But I just think that there is a link between having a disability and anorexia and I think that it's something that people don't particularly notice. They always assume that anorexia is something that you have because you are you know succumbing to peer pressure or because you need to feel that you can fit in by being a skinnier size or because of the media or because of they see this fashion model or because of this industry or whatever but actually it's not that it's not just someone who is trying to be like their icon it's actually more entrenched in a lot of psychological things like mine was because of my disability and for some people it can be a lot of deep rooted fear and anxieties that they haven't overcome i mean I also had depression as well when I was younger with my sight loss, so it can be a lot of things. So I'm very against people saying that anorexia is a lifestyle choice, or it's a diet, or it's just people seeking attention, or that only girls get it, or you can only be a teenager to get it. I mean, of course, it is prevalent amongst teenagers, and particularly teenage girls, but guys can get it too. You can get it when you're older, you can get it when you're a lot younger. It is something that is very complex, and it is a mental health condition, and it's not something that people do as a diet. It's not that. It's so much more than that. I would have eaten if I if I could, but it was that mental block that I had because of the anorexia. So anyone who says that anorexia is a, is a choice or it's not a mental health condition really does need to stop and think about what they're saying because it's actually not. It's a really serious and very life-threatening condition. I think there needs to be more research and more resources done on the topic and I think also there needs to be a bit more of a an open conversation towards you know this part of mental health because I feel mental health is hugely undiscussed and it's such a taboo subject even now but I think it doesn't have to be and I think I would like to see people talking about anorexia more but also mental health in general and eating disorders and just hope that me sitting down in front of a camera and writing a blog post and talking about my eating disorders helped you guys to feel more comfortable talking about your experiences or opening up about your eating disorder or mental health condition because there's really nothing to be ashamed of it is what it is and it is a disability in itself and even though you can't see it it doesn't mean it doesn't exist and that's just what I want people to take away from this is that anorexia is very complex and it is not just as simple as someone putting a bit of cake or you know eating a bit of salad or something it's not as simple as that it really is a mental block and it's such a demanding and very draining thing to live with on a daily basis and that's what I want you to remember if you know someone who's got anorexia just try and reach out to them and just keep on trying because you will get to them eventually and if you keep trying and believing in them and trying to make them see what a lovely person they are and trying to make them realise their self-worth, it will get to a point where they will hear you and they will say that they want help and that they will reach out for the help and when you make them realise that they do need help and that they are worth more than this and that actually they have got anorexia or an eating disorder, 
that's when they'll start to improve. Don't ever be disheartened if they don't hear you the first time. You've just got to keep on going until they do. And also, just anyone who's watching this, whether you've spoken to me about your condition or whether you are going through anorexia at this point, just remember you're worth so much more than this and you can get through it and you just have to believe in yourself. Whether you've got, If you've got an eating disorder, just remember that you can reach out whether you want to go to a charity for advice, whether you want to speak to a family or a friend or you know even a teacher if you're at school or someone who represents you if you're at university. Don't suffer in silence. Just open your mouth and speak about it. It can be easier said than done. I know that from past experience because I was so afraid to talk about it but... If you talk about it and just say how you feel, it does really, really lift the weight off and it can really help. So just start the conversation, be a bit brave, talk about it, don't be afraid to and you'll be surprised actually what it can do for you. So that's it for today guys, I really hope you found this useful and you've got some advice from it and that it's helped in some small way. Don't be afraid to reach out to me, I would love to hear your comments or if you want to email me privately then you're welcome to. Feel free to comment below as well if you want to but just bear in mind other people's feelings as well as my own when commenting because this is a very sensitive topic so just try and be a bit sensitive when you're commenting because it's a very delicate topic for a lot of people. I mean you guys are lovely so I don't really have to worry about that. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new as well and I will see you guys in my next one.